Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy. Today I'm going to be talking about a few different types of abrasive filaments that you can use for your 3D printer and specifically for the Flash Forge Adventure 5M because that is the printer that I use to print everything that's in front of this table in front of me. Now, first things first, in case you're new, what exactly is an abrasive filament? Well, basically an abrasive filament is any kind of filament that has something added to it in order to give it a very specific look or property. So for example, wood filled filament, there's metal filled filaments, carbon fiber filament, uh, you've also got some marble filament, glass filament that has glass fibers mixed in, things like that is considered abrasive. And when you use an abrasive filament, you're also recommended to use a hardened steel nozzle. Because if you use like a regular brass nozzle that comes on some printers, that, those abrasive filaments have a tendency to chew through those pretty quickly. So if you wanna preserve your nozzles, you need to upgrade it to a hardened steel nozzle, something that's tough so that it can withstand the abrasiveness of these types of filaments. So if you're using the Flash Forge Adventure 5M, you have two choices, and unfortunately only two choices. You can either get the 0.6 millimeter hardened steel nozzle or the 0.8 millimeter hardened steel nozzle. The standard one, which is 0.4, is not hardened steel, and then the 0.2 is also not hardened steel, and Flash Force does not offer any hardened steel versions of those smaller nozzles. So you got two choices that you can choose from. Unfortunately, I wish the variety were more, but it is what it is. But for everyone else who has uh, printers that don't require those proprietary nozzles, then you will be able to get a hardened steel nozzle at a much, much lower price than the Flash Forge folks. So let me show you what I got here on the table in front of me. First, let's go over some of the filament. Now, this filament over here is from a company called iBus, and I actually reviewed one of their filament dryers recently. I had no idea that they also made filament, and they sent this along with the filament dryer. I didn't know they were gonna do it, but they did. I tried it out, I liked it, so that's why I'm going to show you. So they, right now at least, don't do filaments that are just the plain colors, white, red, blue, green, you know, the basic stuff. They, they have more earthy tones to them, and these are matte filaments. So this one right here, for example, is their terracotta matte filament. And this one right here, which is a smaller spool, the slightly darker color, this is their craft PLA filament. Now, both of these are matte. And the thing about matte filaments are, they're technically also abrasive, but they're not as abrasive as something like carbon fiber. Uh, and just so you know, when it comes to this matte filament, I did run these through the 0.4 millimeter nozzle on the Flash Forge Adventure 5M simply because even though matte filament, it is abrasive, it's like on the, on the lesser aggressive scale of abrasive filament. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go with it and see what happens. The nozzles are still working fine, by the way, but if you just want to be more safe, try the hardened steel nozzles for all this stuff. So here are those two colors for that. And then I also have from Duramic, this is some glow in the dark filament. It may not seem like it's abrasive, but it is. So I got this on Amazon for a really good price, like around $16 or so. And then last but not least, one of my favorites, if not my favorite, also from Duramic, also purchased on Amazon. This is their marble filament, all right, the one kilogram spool. And what's great about marble filament is it makes your prints look like statues, you know, because it's got this nice sort of uh, light gray color, but speckled within it. You can see the little black specks that resemble marble. And that is really, really amazing. So these are just a few of the filaments that I tried out. If you want to see what happened when I tried to use a uh, carbon fiber PETG, I did a separate video on that. And that's also an abrasive filament. Element. So check the link in the description or the card above my head to take you over to that specific video. Now let's start things off here with the marble filament. So I can show you some of the models that I printed with this, starting with 
this planter. Most of these are planters because for some reason I'm into them right now, but you can still see the type of quality that you can get. So this is from the Duramic Marble um, PLA, and this is of Michelangelo's David with a hole in his head because he's a planter. And when you take a nice good look at this, what I really love about this type of filament is that it does an amazing job of hiding the imperfections when it comes to FDM printing, like layer lines, or maybe you have a little bit of ghosting because you're printing at a high speed with a bigger nozzle. And this does a great job at hiding those imperfections. If you look close enough, you can see them, but just at a glance, and especially at like arms, arms distance, you're not gonna be able to see it all that well, you, but you can see the nice definition of it, and it makes it look like it's a lot more high end than what it really is. It's just plastic, but it looks really, really awesome. And this also comes with a base that's printed separately, also printed with the marble PLA. So if you're looking for something sort of to spruce up the modern decor inside of your house, or you're looking for a unique planter, this is definitely the type of filament that you would want to use. Speaking of which, I've also used this filament to make this other planter of this Stormtrooper head, same concept, you know, and this color works well because it's a Stormtrooper. And again, it did a great job of hiding some of the imperfections caused by the high speed printing with these uh, types of layer lines. These were done with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle on the Flash Forge Adventure 5M, left everything the same. I printed this on some high speed PLA settings. So I didn't even try to slow it down. I didn't try to adjust anything. I just let it go. And if it looks good, then it works for me. I'm not gonna fuss about it unless it just really doesn't look good. So these came out looking quite good. And the last thing I wanna show you that was printed for this is this cool Coliseum type base that goes along with the next figure that I'm going to show you, which is this guy here. And this also is very, very fitting for this type of print because the marble looks really great when it comes to making something that's like a Romanesque kind of a statue, you know, and that's why Michelangelo's David works so well with this. And now that brings me to the second filament. This guy here is a print of the ghoul from the Fallout Amazon Prime show. And this was made with glow in the dark filament. Now, because this was made with glow in the dark filament, we need to see this bad boy glow in the dark. I'm gonna do my best to show you that right now. And if you know about Fallout and the lore and some of the things that's going on in that show, then you might be familiar with the radiation and the glowing ones, the ghouls. So I thought that he would make a great candidate for glow in the dark filament. And printing with this filament was actually pretty simple. It was easy. I didn't have any problems with it whatsoever. And it came out just looking great. I feel like I need to do a quick little intermission to explain why the things on this table might not look the same way that they did a second ago. And uh, long story short, I recorded the entire second part of this video completely out of focus. Forgot to turn the autofocus back on, but came back and now here's take two of the second part of the video. And this is where I talk about the matte filaments that I have here. So for these matte filaments, I decided that I wanted to bring some life into the house using 3D printing. And the first thing that I printed out here was this planter. This is a self-watering planter. And the way that this works is you put water at the bottom of it. And then I also have some cotton balls that I put inside of this narrow chamber. And when you fill this with water, it gets absorbed by the cotton balls and the cotton balls transfer that water to the soil right under here. So it basically waters the plant from the bottom. And I've had this going for like two, three weeks now. And this plant is thriving inside of this planter. In case you're wondering, can this matte PLA actually sustain life along with the soil that I have in here? And the answer is yes it is actually quite a bit bigger than it was when I first got it and the other thing is if you want to use this type of stuff for plants you can get succulents like this because they don't require much sunlight and they don't require much water so if you want to have a little bit of green a little bit of life to your 3d prints but you don't think you're actually going to take care of the plants you can go for succulents because they're easy to take care of 
So I showed this to someone and they really, really liked it. They knew some people that would be into something like this and that is awesome. So it really helps with the home decor. So the second thing that I decided to do to bring a bit of life in here is I printed this. Now I forget exactly what this model is based off of, but it is a place for me to have even more succulents and a cacti and be able to use this as a home decor. Now when it comes to the matte filament, it doesn't completely hide the layer lines, but it does a decent job at keeping them minimized. So if you go over this with like sandpaper, I'm sure that you'll be able to get rid of what layer lines that you do see, but just kind of at a glance, it just looks quite nice understated you know kind of in the background it doesn't pop out super shiny like regular pla does for example this is an oddish pokemon plant planter but this is not um matte this is just regular pla and it's shiny so you can probably also hear as i'm rubbing the smooth areas and then if i do the same thing for this you can actually hear the difference between the, the, the feel and the texture of these two different types of filaments. So that just sort of gives you a auditory idea of what things are like when it comes to this matte filament and non matte filament. And then the last thing I want to show, this is another planter, but this is Luke Skywalker's house on Tatooine. And it also came with this little door that you can just slot right in. I can probably glue that in, but it also comes with a door that's optional to print. And like I said, everything that you see here, the STL, the files where you can download them, they're all free. They'll be down in the description. And again, this came out looking very nice, nice smooth bottom here. We got the drainage hole that came out very nice as well. Print it with the 0.6 millimeter hardened steel nozzle on the Flash Forge Adventure 5M. And as far as the speed settings go, I didn't touch them. I printed these just using the regular high speed PLA setting. 220 degrees Celsius for the nozzle, 60 degrees Celsius for the bed, and just let everything else ride. And it turned out fine, so that's what I'm going with. Could it use more tweaking? Absolutely, especially to try to get rid of some of the layer lines that you do see, but just as far as the default profile goes, I think that it looks just fine. So I hope that you enjoyed this look at these different abrasive filaments that you can use for your 3D printer, especially if you're a part of the Flash Forge crowd. And I'm really interested in checking out some other types of abrasive filaments, especially the ones that have bits of metal ground up inside of them, just to see how they look in comparison to regular PLA, see how they feel in comparison to regular PLA, and some different things that we can do with them, even if it's just really more for decorative purposes. So if you are interested in stuff like like that and other things that are 3D printing related, you definitely want to make sure to subscribe to this channel because I'm cranking out videos just as fast as I can think about them and there's going to be another one coming up quite soon. And remember, if you want links to any of these models, they will be down in the description along with the links to each of the filaments that I used and showed here today. So thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.